Eating for $2 a day with this inflation in grocery prices, can it even be done? We are gonna check it out. Can I feed one person for an entire week for right at $14? We are going to scour the ads. We are going to go to multiple stores because every penny counts in this extreme grocery budget challenge. Welcome to Albertsons. This is our starting spot today. Yes, Albertsons is a more expensive store. However, I decided to look at all of the grocery ads at home. I was just gonna do a Walmart pickup, make it nice and snappy and easy, but honestly, only shopping at Walmart, I could not do the challenge. It wasn't going to work. So I started pulling up the ads for other stores that are more expensive, and I found an amazing deal here at Albertsons. It's the only reason we're here, and it was the inspiration and kickoff for this video. It's potatoes. When I saw this five pound bag for $1.48, I knew this would be the base of my meals for the week. And when I do buy a big bag of potatoes like this, make sure you look inside the bag. Are there any rotten ones? Does it smell gross? And if you weigh them on the scale, you might find some are about four and a half pounds. Some are a little over five pounds. I wanted to make sure I was getting as much as possible because they charge you per bag. I weighed a couple of bags. All the ones I weighed were just a hair over five pounds, so I figured out that it didn't really matter which bag I picked because they were extremely similar. And as you'll see later on, this will be the base of everything. I also wanted to check out the prices of the ham, the ham steaks. Albertsons was way too expensive, so I pick up a substitute a little bit later in the video that you will see. But my options were not as cheap as I wanted, so I skipped this section completely. I am here at Dollar Tree. I'm only picking up two items because these two items are cheaper here than anywhere else, including Walmart. I wanted to get a can of chili. It's cheaper to make it yourself. I don't wanna make an enormous pot and have to buy 15 ingredients. That's not gonna work with my budget. So this is the ticket. And also this large container of corn tortillas. It's only $1.25. Every other store I can find, the canned chili is like $1.99 instead of $1.25. And the tortillas are also like $1.69. I can't get them this cheap. So these two ingredients from Dollar Tree, Let's check out a different store. I actually picked up three ingredients. I got this seven ounces of sausage for $1.25. This is my ham substitute I talked about earlier. When every single penny counts, you utilize everything you have at your fingertips. And in this store's case, it's the digital coupons. They're having a sale and a digital coupon. And I realize I'm going to multiple stores today, I know. But I tried to make sure that all my stores were pretty close together and that I set aside about an hour for my shopping today. So for one of my meals, I am picking up this for 59 cents. I'm now in frozen food. I'm only getting three things at this store. They're all on sale, they're all with digital coupon. This is gonna be one of my meals. It's the frozen corn for 99 cents. They have all these for 99 cents today, 12 ounces. Remember when these used to be 16 ounces? Feels like forever ago. There were some great prices at this store today, so I tried to grab the lowest of the low with the online digital coupons. Sometimes I get a little bit of pushback by going to different stores. However, all of these stores I went to were within a one to five minute drive of each other, like all within a mile radius, so it really didn't take that long, and I got some ingredients from Walmart. I tried to get the black beans from Dollar Tree, but it was 12 ounces instead of 16. This cheese that I want to buy might blow my budget, but I'm willing to donate plasma <laughs> to pay for this cheese. It's funny because it's true. I was able to find some clearance bread, 79 cents, so I think I'm going to be able to afford my cheese. You really saved the day. In this project, this, this time around, I've been doing these extreme grocery budget challenges for years and years now. And this time around, there's some basic items I always pick up, and those items are about double the price now. They would be things like oatmeal. They would be things like complete pancake mix, double. Canned chili, double. I mean, it's still under $2, so it's still an inexpensive option, but double what it used to be. I spent $14.39 on all of the groceries you see in front of you. And as I'm looking at it now, I'm thinking, how is it even possible to feed one person for an entire week with this small little pile of food. I still think we can do it. I'm excited to show you what we have going on. Here's everything I picked up. Tortillas from the Dollar Tree. Clearance bread from Walmart. This was a nice find, so I didn't have to make homemade bread. 
Cream cheese, 99 cents. I went with the extra sharp cheddar from Walmart, $2. Because it's extra sharp, you don't have to use as much of it in each recipe. This one kind of bugged me, this sour cream, because I know at my Fred Meyer, I can get their sour cream for 99 cents all the time, and this was $1.88. So I feel like this was much more expensive than anything else. I'm really surprised at the cost of canned chili these days. Dollar Tree for this one, great deal on the cream of chicken condensed soup. This is not something I, almost ever buy, but I feel like this was a good price. The egg prices around here are going up. Where are they where you are? Awesome deal on the potatoes at $1.49. One bag of corn for 99 cents, one pound of black beans, my uh, ham substitute, the sausage from Dollar Tree at $1.25. That is everything I have, let's get cooking. To kick off the cooking portion, I am gonna take my entire bag of potatoes. I do need to prep, um, I don't know, a couple of them for my lunches along with the black beans. So we're just gonna prep and ration right now. This is the entire five pound bag of potatoes. It is now gone. So how many am I going to need for each dish is the question. What if I did like three for lunches? Okay, so we'll set that to the side. I could do maybe another two, two big ones, uh, also for lunches. And then the rest can be split into my other recipes. So half and half probably. So this is gonna be for my casserole and this one is gonna be for my soup. So now that I have rationed everything, I can start prepping. So for my tacos, I do want baked potatoes. So I'm just gonna pop these three in the microwave five minutes, I'm just gonna give them a quick wash, keep the skins on and stick them in the fridge. I wanna roast them in a pan, hash brown style and a cold old baked potato is the best way to do that. So that's what I'll do with these. These look great. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab them and plop them into this container and stick them in the fridge and I'll use these tomorrow for lunch. I will be cooking my one pound of black beans in this Instant Pot. It's my favorite way to do it, but you don't have to do it in one of these. You can do it on a pan in the stove. You can do it in a crock pot, either way. I did soak the beans in cold water on the counter overnight and rinsed them thoroughly. I will cover with water, here we go, until I have about an inch or one finger knuckle of water covering. I actually think I need a little bit more, so let me add a little bit more water. That looks pretty good. And one or two tablespoons of this chicken bouillon. All right, I went with two. Just give that a little stir. <laughs> make sure it's plugged in. And before I put the lid on, I like to just make sure the ceiling ring is totally under this. It is, it looks fine. And I will hit the bean button over here for 30 minutes. It feels like a little long because I soaked them. Let's go down to 20. And hopefully that will get started and I'll see you when these are done. Can we do an entire week's worth of breakfast with these two ingredients? It feels crazy, I know. But I am telling you, eggs and toast or an egg sandwich is literally one of my favorite breakfasts. It's what I eat most of the time. This is my go-to. This is what I already do. This isn't even like a struggle for me. Oatmeal would be more of a struggle for me. So because there's only 12 of these and there's seven days of the week, we can't do two every single day. So two of the days will be one egg. So I believe two of the days will be a sandwich. The other five days will be two scrambled eggs and some toast. So let's go ahead up and slice up our bread. Let's make a sandwich. All we need in addition to this is salt and pepper and some kind of cooking fat. Could be butter, could be oil, could be anything, doesn't matter. If you're lucky and you have some jam sitting around, that would be delicious as well, but it's not needed. Okay, I'm gonna use butter because it makes really delicious toast. And I am gonna toast my bread right in this pan. The same pan, I'm gonna cook my one egg for my egg sandwich today. So, I've got my bread, I'm just gonna plop it right there in the butter, we'll flip it over, it'll be delicious. When I do the first flip, I will sprinkle just a little bit of salt. If you haven't tried it, you should try it, it's amazing. Of course you could use a toaster to make this toast. You don't have to do it in a pan, but I am telling you, it's more delicious like this. It is more delicious. So if you've never tried it, I would encourage you to try it. It's amazing. Look how good this sandwich looks. It was 
enormous. It was bigger than my head. And don't mind me, I kind of burned my mouth on the hot egg right there, but it's fine. This was so good. You could even put it in a baggie and take it with you if you're in a really big rush. Two pieces of toast, two scrambled eggs. This is literally my favorite breakfast. I have it like five days a week. It's so good. And if you haven't made your toast like this, just in a pan, you need to try it. It's fantastic. And if your eggs taste bland, you just need more salt. That's the secret. This is my breakfast for five of the days of this week. No regrets. It's so delicious. This is going to be most of our lunches for the week in addition to leftovers from the other meals. Isn't it amazing that this tiny little bag of dried black beans can create this huge container? Like this is really a lot of food. Baked potatoes that have cooled in the fridge and I'm gonna use my tortillas as well as the cheese to make some garlic black bean and potato tacos. I'm gonna cook one at a time. So these three potatoes will give me three days worth of tacos, quite a few of them. So I'll put the other two back in the fridge. We're just gonna do one day's worth of filling right now. And then once I run out of these potatoes, we might just have to do black bean quesadillas, which is also fine. And, and I'm basically gonna do a garlic hash brown with these potatoes until they are nice and crispy. And I wanna cook up my corn tortillas here, just here on the flame. You can do it on a pan too. Three tacos every day for lunch this week. And if you're into sour cream, I do have this for a little dollop on top. I didn't even use all my filling. I don't know about you, but I could eat tacos every day. For my first dinner, I am making a potato corn chowder. I'm gonna kick it off with whatever oil or fat you have in your house. I have uh, bacon fat right here. You could use uh, a vegetable oil, an olive oil, butter, whatever. It does not matter. I'm just gonna get my potatoes cooking real quick. If you happen to have an onion, that would be great, but you don't need it. I am kicking it off with about five cups of diced potatoes. I washed them really well so I could leave the skins on. And there are so few ingredients in this. I'm using this uh, shallower pan because I'm only, because I'm only cooking for one. If I was cooking for my family of six, I would use this larger soup pan that's sitting over here but I'm using that for something else. It's a secret surprise dinner. And I will be using salt and pepper pretty liberally. Uh, they are the basis for every meal. You don't have to have a lot of other stuff. It makes it nice, but it's not necessary. So I have just have some kosher salt here. Potatoes can handle a lot of salt. And I just have some fresh pepper. You pick up as a way of go, okay? Come on now. Of course, this isn't fresh. I got it for table pepper and I ended up getting the wrong grind. So I'm trying to use it in my cooking. And I want this to be a little on the spicy side, so I'm gonna go pretty heavy. And this next one is a slight additional cost, but I do think it's worth it. If you don't have onions, I do have this onion powder. I'm only gonna be using about five cents worth of onion powder in here. Uh, it's about a teaspoon, a, a good, good amount of this. So we will just saute these until they get a little bit of a crust, and then we will add our stock and our remaining two ingredients, and it literally is as easy as this. I have about three cups of chicken broth. I'm using the bouillon cu cubes. So the potatoes are barely covered like this and I'll simmer this until it's the, until the potatoes are barely cooked through. It's gonna take 15 to 20 minutes or so. 15 minutes later, it's time to add my bag of corn. I will add this entire bag and my entire block of cream cheese. Oh, uh, maybe half. Let's start with half and just see what it tastes like. I can always add more. I usually do an entire block for my entire family. I'm trying to remind myself that I'm only cooking for one here. I'm not used to that. Okay, there's four ounces of cream cheese. And it's gonna take a while for that to soften and melt all in there because it's straight out of the fridge. So I'm gonna let this go for another five minutes or so. I will check back in with you then. All right, I just did a taste test and this is delicious. So I'm gonna leave it just like this. I believe this is easily three dinners. So let's dish it out and see what it is that we are working with. And I did end up with a half a block of cream cheese left over that I can totally use for my ham and potato casserole. Okay, let's dish this. Okay, I wanted to see how many cups I could fit into this bowl. This is a pretty big bowl. What do you think, two cups? That feels like a good serving. Okay, that is two full cups 
of soup. So I'm gonna dish out the rest into storage containers and see what we end up with. I ended up adding a whole nother half a cup to this. So I have two and a half cups of, of the chowder here and then these two containers for two more dinners. So I have three dinners right here. This is so good. It's amazing how just a couple of ingredients can make such a delicious meal. For one of our main dinners, which is going to be a potato casserole, I'll be mixing everything in this large bowl. So I have my cream chicken soup, the entire can's going in, and at least half of my sour cream. So we'll go ahead, open those, dump those in here. I've already cut up my sausage. Any kind of meat would be fine. If you had ham, that would work. That would be no sweat. I just chose the sausage because it was the cheapest option for the ounces for the weight for the amount but if you wanted to choose a different protein that's totally fine i will start with half of this container of sour cream and we'll see how it goes so we'll just stir this around a little bit i will most likely need to thin this out a hair uh, i think i'm just gonna add some water if you had milk around that would work chicken broth would also work not crucial water's fine here comes my diced sausage. Yes, I know they look like hot dogs. It'll be fine. And I have one cup of water going in here right now. I'm hoping to make two eight by eight casserole dishes of this. Okay, I know this looks like super weird right now, <laughs> but it's your standard casserole, which is where you like dump creamy looking things in a pan. I'm now gonna add a good old handful of my cheddar cheese. That's probably one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Got about one teaspoon of pepper going in, one teaspoon of salt, and now I will very carefully mix in my shredded potatoes. I shredded all the potatoes that I had set aside for this casserole. Here come the potatoes. And I did save some of my cheddar cheese to go on top. Trying to be super careful here so it does not turn to mush. I do prefer to use a shredded hash brown when I make this casserole usually, but the whole potatoes are definitely cheaper. Here are my two casserole dishes, each eight by eight. Let's divvy this up half and half. And my oven is preheated to 350. So there's two ways you can do this. You can cook all of it right now and just eat it as the week goes on. Another option is to cook one and put the other one in the fridge covered up and cook it in a few days. I could probably eat three dinners out of this pan and three dinners out of this pan. So we're looking at six-ish dinners out of these two pans. If you wanted to bulk it up a little bit, you could purchase some more frozen veggies or canned veggies, have that on the side. That would be great. And if you used an actual ham instead of my sausage here, you could have extra of that on the side as well. I prefer green beans with this casserole, but of course you can do whatever you want if you have the extra dough. AC said you had some dough for me. These are ready to go into the oven, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or so. I have set aside two potatoes for two lunches. We're gonna do chili topped baked potatoes. I do have some cheese that I will be putting onto this. So I have this cleaned potato. I poked it with a fork and it's gonna go into the microwave for, I don't know, four minutes, three, four minutes. And then I'm gonna heat up my chili just in a pan and I'll use half this can for today, half this can for tomorrow. If you would like a copy of all of the recipes from today's video and a shopping list so you can recreate the things that I made in this video, I will have all of that down in the description box below. Was it the healthiest week of food? No, probably not. It's Feels impossible to do that with only $2 a day to feed a person, $14 for an entire week with today's grocery prices, but we made delicious food. I was satisfied, I didn't starve, and I'm looking forward to doing the next challenge at $3 a day. What will $21 bring us in the way of creative meals? And of course, if you truly are struggling with food, don't forget you can always reach out to your local community churches, food pantries, family crisis centers. There's all kinds of local programs to help out people so nobody has to go hungry. And if you don't know where to find those, you can always check with your local school district, the library, the sheriff's office. All of those people will know about all the local programs that are offered in your area. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.